maybe it's something that I learned over the years that um, you should not be too fast in or you should not run through your career or your life in general and you should reflect a little bit about it and very often the moment when a door was opened that was the moment for me to reflect on it um, should I do a residency in Ibiza you know it's the offers are there for four years I guess and um, I still haven't decided. I, I, obviously, I didn't do it yet. I don't have a residence in Ibiza, and there was always um, it was, it, it's always the same routine. You play in Ibiza, and then it's the end of the season, and then um, for the next year, the, uh, there's people coming and asking you if you might do something re on a regular basis next year, and then you immediately say no, or at least me. Then you reflect about it, and you it's not black and white anymore. But so far, I decided not to do anything. And the point of it is that um, I had to learn in my, in my life, in my career, that don't answer an email straight away. You know, let it there maybe for a day before you answer. And um, don't answer that question straight away. Give it a little time to, to yeah, reflect on it and see the good and bad in it. And even if you, even if the, a lot of the stores means that you don't know what is behind it, you don't know how it is there. Um, still, um, don't take every possible door that is open. Uh, learn to say no and see what is good for you. Well, this is how I started, this is how I learned stuff, this is what gives me the freedom to play all kind of music. Even if I, I uh, even if every DJ would say like, yeah, I play two hours and I can do what I want to do, uh, but it's not true, you, you, you follow a certain formula, um, depending on where you're playing right now, um, uh, which is what the DJ should do. Um, uh, it's, it's the mix of uh, doing exactly what you want to do and of what could work here. As a um, all night long, um, you set the rules different. As simple as that. Um, I mean, I get so many amazing music that is between 95 and 110 BPM, and I hardly play them uh, on a festival in Leeds, yeah? in a ma main prime time slot in front of 5,000 people. Uh, I tend to play my house stuff there, and uh, which is good. I'm a house DJ, that's fine. But to have the chance to play seven or 12 hours is where you can just let yourself go. Um, I don't really know exactly when it started, but I guess it was going along with this whole Resident Advisor uh, Top 100 chart thing, where um, I was I was in the top 10 for about eight years or something, when always number eight, seven, six, and um, that n no one cared about, actually. But the moment I became number one on that, um, it changed somehow everything. Um, in a way, no one came up to me before that and said, like, ah, it's so amazing you are number two on the charts. <laughs> but then it changed. All of a sudden, yeah, you are the best DJ in the world, blah. Um, obviously, in the first moment, it's like, that's amazing. Yeah. But um, at a certain point, um, certain things came with it that uh, I didn't really like anymore. For instance, uh, whenever I start somewhere to play, all the phones come out. Blah. That's, for that's the reason why I have in my contract, it wasn't possible there, that uh, all the lights go off when I start. So I usually tell the light people or my tour manager Björn's job is to, to speak to them before and say like 10 minutes, no lights at all. And um, as you maybe my, my, as you maybe realize there, um, it wasn't a mistake of the clip that there was no sound in the beginning. I on purpose took time to let a certain pause between the DJ before me and, uh, and me. And I wanted to get this tension away of people like, okay, now the craziness starts, now he will begin. And um, so basically I'm trying to, um, to always play like the first two tracks where for sure people will not scream. So to calm them down a little bit. And if it's indoors, it's uh, also coming with no lights. And then from that point on, um, I go with the flow. 
I became a DJ because, oh, again, not to be nostalgic or, oh, it used to be better, but I thought, oh, yeah, I can do this because back then it was, you were on the level of a bartender. You know, you were really on that level. You were, they were serving the drinks, you were serving the music. And people were still dancing more with each other than nowadays everyone is transfixed onto a stage or a DJ booth or whatever. So, yeah. I'm not saying that's bad, it's just how it, how it developed, but I find it a bit... It's about being in that game. And I didn't really understand what it actually means. Um, um, I, and then there was the concept of, okay, there's a nightclub there, you're DJing there, and people can actually in the game attend that nightclub. And I was like, oh, this is stupid, but also funny. So I answered, all right, it's maybe interesting. Um, let me think about it. And um, so um, I started to think about it, which was not my intention in India, but um, that was in such a crazy offer that I started to think about it. And I just, uh, okay, maybe comparing it to Royal Albert Hall, I was thinking like, I mean, this is, this is crazy. Um, in 10 years, if I'm going to, I will not get this offer again. In 10 years, if I'm looking back on what I've done, uh, why did I say no back then? It's, it's actually fun and I have to go to New York and they put all this, you know, I'm going into this suit where they track all my movements and I'm actually playing there and they make my face and all this, even if I think it didn't work out well. Um, um, I thought that the experience itself is so amazing and um, my son might even play it in three years. Um, that uh, I couldn't let this uh, opportunity pass, so I said yes. Um, then it became clear that I actually have to make a mix for it, and um, and that the mix is going to be played in the car. So basically, I don't know. I guess a lot of people know this uh, game. I uh, realized that actually, when I say that I'm going to play at blah 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 festival, and I'm sitting in a car with the driver or whatsoever, he is saying, "Well, yeah, whatever." When I said, "Yeah." I'm going to be in that game. Everyone is like, oh, really? That game? Uh, I didn't actually know how big it is. What I can tell you is from my perspective as a DJ, like playing every weekend, going, and I'm sorry that I have to add to the mystique and cliche of that place, but going to Panorama Bar on a Sunday, for instance, um, that place still reminds me of why I once got into this or why I'm passionate about dance music or why I think DJing is fun, you know? Just, I guess, for the benefit of people who haven't been there, like, what do you think are those, like, essential ingredients? Is it the sound system? Is it the shutters that open at the It's a door policy moments? because everyone who makes it in there is so happy that they immediately start having a good time. I mean, <laughs> that's maybe part of it, but I, I think another big part, again, as kind of snoozy as it sounds, you, you get a sticker on your phone, so you can't take pictures. So people are less concerned with how does this look later in my feed or whatever that is. But they can kind of let loose more than in other places, it seems like to me. But, but it's always been the policy there, so it, it feels natural there. I see it sometimes in other places where they try to enforce that policy, no pictures, blah, 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 and then it just adds to the stress because you have bouncers who are just busy with putting flashlights into people's fa fighting flashlights with flashlights, you know, and I think that makes it, yeah, that makes it much more of a itchy situation for everyone. I don't know, I thought that I stopped with 35. I think when I was 29, I said to my back then girlfriend, now wife, I said like 35, it's over. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm 42 now, so it's not over. Um, right now, I'm feeling um, I don't want to celebrate my 50th birthday in clubs. Um, on the same time, um, when I was 30, 42, it sounded like, you know, you're way too old for all this, and I've, at least I feel still kind of young. Yeah? And I don't know if this is maybe the same feeling with 50. So at least for me, it's not that there is no date that I want to stop. It's like, no, no, I'm going forever. No, there is a date, but I don't know when it's going to be. Mm -hmm.